A lot of us thought the development for Mountain Blade Warband had come to an end. After the overwhelming success of the 2012's Napoleonic Wars DLC, it didn't seem that the Tail Wars team needed to do anything more to Mountain Blade Warband to booster the franchise, and that the next one, Bannerlord, is on its way, and that that is where all of the time and dedication is going to spend. But then we were surprised. On the 11th of December 2014 was released Viking Conquest. Bright and Wilder was a Viking mod for Mountain Blade Warband. You could go and invade England, taking your Viking hordes with you, training and gaining renown throughout the world, building up your Viking army. Because of the success and how good this was and how much people loved it, the Tail Wars team got the Bright and Wilder mod developers to come and bring a new DLC to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, there is something that I just want to point out here, this is not really towards the single player. The single player for Viking Conquest is amazing. I absolutely love it to pieces and I've heard so much feedback and this is where most of the positive reactions have come from. It's so in depth, there's so many new things that we haven't seen in Mountain Blade Warband before and it's just brought a whole new gameplay method to the series. The single player for Viking Conquest is phenomenal. I definitely recommend you pick it up just to check that out yourself if you're more of a single player person, but this video is going to be focusing more on the multiplayer side. So what does it take for a game to fail? My tick boxes for a failed game is a game that hasn't had the playtime that the developers were expecting, or that predecessors have. I'm basing this off the DLC Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars. This was such a successful DLC and is still played in events and players today. There are hundreds and thousands of people playing it every single day of the week and it is still very much alive. But why didn't this happen with the Viking Conquest DLC? It was released two years after the Napoleonic Wars one, so surely it would have a bigger player base. So this is what I'm going to be going into. To start off loading up the game, you can obviously see it's had its issues. The servers are almost completely empty. When I was loading up, there were four or five servers on the mod, or DLC, but there was only about 12 people on one of them. The rest were completely empty, and of course, that is a shocking amount of servers for a fairly recent DLC for the game. If we're comparing this to Mountain Blade Napoleonic Wars, there are hundreds of servers, each with so many people on them, and especially when events come around, you get up to 200 people on servers every day of the week, and it's absolutely incredible to see the player base that are still in such an old game. And this is where I think it really fails talking about events. There isn't really a community behind the Viking Conquest DLC. You do have the trying to keep Viking Conquest DLC alive, steam groups and things like that, but they don't really seem to have too much of an effect. Yes, maybe there's been one or two events on the mod in the past, but there's not weekly or even daily events that are happening. They are not scheduled and organized where clans can come together, fight each other in amazing Viking shield wars and gain victory on the field. Because of this, no one wants to record it. Everyone loves to record the single player, I've seen so many series on YouTube of the single player Viking Conquest because it's very popular and it's very well made, but the multiplayer, you're going to struggle to find some footage of that. This is because just playing normal Mountain Blade multiplayer isn't the most exciting thing for people on YouTube to watch. The only thing that people would really want to come and watch in the multiplayer on YouTube is if there were big events, big organized events, and there isn't this in Viking Conquest. So, we don't have any videos on YouTube really of the multiplayer. This means that there isn't much of a community because no one's really new being bought in. And because there's no community, there's no clans. Clans are the most important part to keeping a Mountain Blade mod or DLC alive because they create the events. And the events are probably, in my opinion, one of the most important things. Now, there is a scenario that kind of opposes this. If we look at native, you don't really see too many events. There used to be tons, now there's think, I think there's one or two a week. And these events aren't that big. So why is Native still really popular? Well, I think this is because it is the base game. You can't play Viking Conquest without Native, but you also can't play Viking Conquest without paying an additional sum of money. So, for an example, if you're a new person coming into the game, you go into be like, hey, this Mountain Blade game is pretty cool. You're gonna go and pick up Warband, and you're going to be playing the multiplayer and the single player alike. 
but it's very unlikely that you're going to go and pick up the Viking Conquest DLC. This is because of the lack of promotion it's had in the past, and I know a lot of people that just play Mountain Blade for the multiplayer, such as Napoleon at Wars Regiment and Native Gameplay. There's so much of this on YouTube, but because no one's really seen the multiplayer of Viking Conquest, no one's gone to pick it up. And for a lot of people, single player just isn't what they play Mountain Blade for. Of course, it differs from person to person. But why aren't there really any clans and events? Now, I have a couple of theories for these. This is obviously just my speculation because I haven't really been aware of any events and regiments or clans that have been involved in Viking Conquest. Now, there is a mechanic in it. This is called the Rage Mechanic, and this is awesome, but I think it does kind of ruin the whole competitive mode for the game. It makes the DLC too casual. Of course, Mountain Blade isn't really made as a competitive game, but there is some type of competitive nature to it when you're trying to play in an event. In Napoleonic Wars, you've got regiments going up against each other. It's all finely tuned and finely balanced, so no one team has a better troops on one side or the other. It all comes down to the skill of a regiment and individual players. But that is not really the case in here. Having this rage mechanic means that whoever presses it, whoever presses it first or whoever builds up their rage quicker then has faster attack speed and does more damage. Now that to me seems somewhat unbalanced. Therefore people are going to be less likely to want to create vents on it because events need to be balanced otherwise people get very angry. I've played a lot of mods. I will just refer back to the March of Rome mod. Back in the day when that was first released that was extremely unbalanced. That's why the mod kept coming and going. Regiments wanted to join it and make events and then they wanted to leave eventually because it just wasn't the balanced game that you want to play. And playing an unbalanced game between factions and clans is not very fun. What is really sad about this is the amount of effort that's been put into the multiplayer of Viking Conquest. Yes, like I have said previously, it is mostly a single player game. Most people buy it for the single player, at least now they do. But the amount of effort that's been put into that multiplayer is still there. There's a variety of custom maps that you can play, a plethora of new tactical weapons and armor that you can use to advantages or disadvantages depending on how much money you want to spend. Yes, it does seem that you're able to buy less and less armor due to the more expensive nature of a lot of it, which might put a few people off, but for me, I think it really expands the player having to have more skill rather than just better equipment. When I was playing, I was pretty much mostly just playing with an axe, and that was it. No shield, very little armor, and a lot of the time, no helmet. So this makes it very vulnerable to archers, which goes back to it being very unbalanced because no one likes getting shot to pieces by archers. But because everything was so expensive, getting a shield is not too easy if you're trying to balance it with a decent melee weapon. But it does mean that you have to use more skill when going into battles, and I love this. Something else that's also been added in this DLC is the ability to decapitate people if you hit them in the right place and you have to get a little bit lucky. I think this is really awesome and I'd love to see events on it where people going around decapitating each other. There's also naval battles but this is more strictly to the single player as well. So in conclusion, why do I think it failed? Well it's a bit of a mix between the lack of coverage of it the lack of community towards it, and of course, with that comes the lack of events. Mountain Blade is a game that needs a community to keep it alive. Many other games are very single player driven, and I don't mean this in terms of the single player mode for the game, but within the multiplayer things like Battlefield, Call of Duty, Total War, they all rely on you as a person. You can go in, you can play a game, and you can come out of it. Mountain Blade is one of those games that you need a group of people to play and have the best experience with, and because of this, Viking Conquest has suffered massively. I think this is much due to its later release as well. Some people were starting to get away from Mountain Blade Warband, and then to see a new DLC coming in just wasn't really enough for people to buy it. There's also been troubles with the reviews on Steam. When it was first released, people didn't really like it, it didn't really live up to their expectations, and of course, there wasn't actually much promotion towards it, so it was kind of came out of the blue for a lot of people. It did have more negative reviews when it was first released, and now, yes, it's become more positive reviews, but because there's still that mixed reviews lingering there, people are less inclined to buy it. 
So, Viking Conquest is an incredible DLC for the single player. If you are much of a single player maniac, I definitely recommend you guys go and pick that up. But if you're looking for an authentic, incredible, massive scale, multiplayer experience, you're going to have to look elsewhere. I definitely recommend picking up the Napoleonic Wars DLC if you haven't already for that type of warfare. But if not, the native of Mountain Blade Warband is always going to tie you over for some hack and slash warfare in the medieval world. What do you think of the reasons for playing this game? Do you think that it's worth it just for the single player? Or do you think the DLC has suffered too badly, it's not even worth picking it up anymore? I'd love to see your reactions down in the comments and I'll definitely be trying to read as many as possible. But until then, I will see you in the next one.